So behind me, we're having this Motorola press conference. Okay, let's go inside and let's see what Motorola Solutions has to talk about the new developments in critical communications. Uh, but finally, we're here uh, and able to uh, meet face to face. My name is Michael K. Uh, I'm responsible for our sales operations uh, for Motorola Solutions in um, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Broadband LTE is uh, is offering not to replace MMR, but to complement it. It's very, it's very, it's a very important point. We believe that through technology, you can uh, you can mitigate a lot of these challenges. Nun, die Gedeihfunk oder das Fetter-System, das wir ähm, für alle Bundesländer oder beziehungsweise zentral Österreich weiter betreiben, are essentially enabling you to extend what you already have into an LTE capable solution. And that's what you have here with the MXM 7000. So what happens is that Motorola Solutions is having five press releases actually at this show. Happy event, sir. So that means <laughs> Ken is there as well. That means that I'm going to uh, to to investigate what's all happening at the Motorola booth. Uh, join me right now. While Jacob is preparing the cappuccino for me at the Motorola Solutions booth, it's time to, to view those press releases. And what is it all about at Motorola Solutions? Well, it's, it's about Tetra and LTE, of course. That's one press release. Another press release is about the connectivity as a service, um, combining all of the technologies together, making sure, and that's been done through the cloud. Um, and then mission critical services on Austria, uh, we have something about an all-in-one Tetra LTE device, a, a portable and a device for in the car. Um, well, we're going to talk about all of these devices and all of these solutions, uh, probably with Tunde Williams, who is from the marketing department of Motorola Solutions. Oh, thank you so much. Um, and of course, with a heart of Motorola Solutions. Um, so there's, there's much to talk about. So they have four key areas at the booth. Later on, we're going to talk to Paul Steinberg, who is the Senior Vice President at Motorola Solutions, about these technologies, about the developments of critical communications. A different interview than we had last time when we were in Madrid. So there's much to talk about and a lot of customers in the back, as you can see. So taking the coffee with me, as you can see, the booth of Motorola Solutions is just about the same booth as last year at Critical Communications in Madrid. Uh, there's an extra section to add it to it, but basically it's all about the same but not about the same products and solutions. It's about different solutions, new solutions, and the excitement is really huge around this show. Even Ken thinks it's quite exciting, right? What's going on? It's a great start to a busy week. It's a great <laughs> a lot start. Going on. And as it just said, five press releases of Motorola solutions. That's yeah. amazing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. And it's great. It's great to see LTE getting infused into the products uh, more and more. And to have Critical Connect actually coming into Europe is a big step forward. Yeah, because that makes almost everything possible, is it? There's a tremendous amount of flexibility in connecting different systems. Uh, so where we first were trying to get everybody into one technology, like mm -hmm. Tetra or DMR, we're now seeing this change, dramatic change actually, to all technologies in one. Yeah, well, it depends on your perspective. There are different approaches and different organizations have different goals. I just talked to Tunda Williams about having an interview at least a high-level interview of what's going on at Motorola, um, Motorola Solutions, of course, but I can't find him. And I'm not sure... Oh, he's over there, so, so let me take the camera, let me get to the Williams for this high-level overview. To the Williams. Hi. Great to be here at Motorola Solutions. Nice to see you. Can you give me a, a, an, an overview of what's going on about the booth of Motorola? So, Quick overview, the booth is divided into four areas and the four areas make a workflow. So on the first step of the workflow is detect and analyze. Yes. This section is essentially where we have our video portfolio. 
So this is where we detect events that are anomalous and we take an action. And that's where it starts, right? Basically, yeah. But obviously in this area, we use a lot of analytics mm -hmm. and AI. And this is where we help our customers detect events, essentially. Then you move to the next okay. step. Which Shall is, we go there? Yep. So we're just approaching the assess and manage area of the booth. And this is where we focus on command and control. So essentially, the software helps decision makers manage incidents and decide on what tactical actions make the most sense. So here you will see our call taking, computer aided dispatch, and all the applications all the way through to evidence management. And then if we move to the, the next part of the booth, here's where we mobilize um, resources to that incident. So the core technology here is communications. Most of this will be familiar to you. We've got our LMR portfolio, our Demetric Express, uh, and we also show in LTE. Obviously, in Europe, as we know, there's increasing interest in integrating LTE with LMR. And we're actually showing a new offer, which is Critical Connects. And it's offering essentially connectivity as a service. So, and the final section the final right one. here is yes. the investigate and resolve. So investigate and resolve is what you focus on at the end of the incident. So when you're building your incident reports, so think of what an officer would do towards the end of a shift. And we have a number of tools to help with that. So on one side, you have the M500, which we announced about seven months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we've done with M500 is we're, we've integrated the in-car with our body wall. And what's really cool about this is now you can get multiple perspectives of the same incident. So if you think of a car camera, that gets one perspective. And if you think of officers responding with body one, they get additional perspectives. But we can bring that into a common timeline. And all of that gets stored in video manager, which we showed earlier. So that's essentially a unified evidence management system. Here is a new offering we're really excited about. It actually started in Australia. It's called PS Core. And think of it as a mobility application. It enables you to move your paper-based workflows onto a digital workflow. What's new here, this, this box you're seeing on the, on the desk, is uh, an actually an Apple CarPlay emulator. So what we're showing here is the possibility of integrating your workflow applications with the car. What's the benefit of this? Think of hands-free operation, for example, making that workflow a lot easier. We talked about the MXP 6000 about a year ago. That was the introduction of Motorola Solutions. It was. One year down the line, MXP 7000. Absolutely. What's the difference? So this is our first converged Tetra and LTE all in one device. So we've got a conventional Tetra radio within here, yes. and we've got the ability to run Android apps at the same time. Okay, so let's take a look. I've got a little demonstration here. We are actually live streaming some of the cameras that we have on the stand. We've got our Vigilon camera cameras dotted around. You can probably see us if I was to zoom in and get a little shot of the back of us live. So we can right. see yes, that. Exactly. That's, exactly. Right? That's us there working live. But at the same time, I can push. I'm talking on Tetra. I'm using direct mode. I can go into my Tetra application. I can change channels. I can pull up Tetra messages. So that's all secure. That's normal status messages. All of the secure functionality that you've got built into Tetra, but the ability to do Android at the same time. So it's really key for people who are in kind of critical roles, you know, army officers, team leaders within public safety, who need to be able to talk 
to their teams, but also use workflow applications, use video messaging, use camera applications, use mapping to be able to see where people are and coordinate <laughs> response to an incident all in one go. So and, and really you exciting. And you have a green version as well, right? Exactly, exactly. So I have, over there. I have. Here's one I prepared earlier. We've got a number of different mounts available. We've got chargers, we've got batteries, we've got the whole works here. So obviously this is the green version, exactly the same inside, but available in a color suitable for military users because that's really where that's we're getting a lot difference? of interest. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah, it's a green housing. And the use case is that um, people would be able to wear this in a number of different styles. Obviously it's got flexible mounting options, it's got nice, easy to change batteries. And we've got this special holster that comes alongside it so you can wear it on your belt very easy to remove very easy to get out the holster quickly but while it's in the holster screen is nice and protected no no problems with it okay It's a very important show for you, right? It is. It's an important show for the industry, and it's just fantastic to see all these people here, and it feels like you know things are coming back, which yeah. is great. Uh, so what I what I found out, you have four sections this time at That's the right. show. That's right. Last time in Madrid, you had three sections. So yeah. that means you're expanding your portfolio, your yep. your capabilities. Does that mean that you keep on expanding until you the whole ecosystem is completed? Whatever is completed, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great question, and yes, the answer, the short answer is yes. We're definitely expanding our products to increase the scope of the ecosystem. The, the products are so capable now, it's important to weave them together, and the, the, the key enabler for the weaving is the workflow. So we're trying to realize an end-to-end -end workflow that's powered by mission-critical communications, mission-critical data with insights. The data comes from video and audio and all kinds of sources, but really it's all about a workflow from you know beginning of engagement, incident management to the back-end processes. One of the other things is trust. Trust is extremely yeah. important. Trust between the manufacturer and the, the distributor. The distributor and the end user and the end user and the public. How do you manage that from a, from a manufacturer's point of view? Yeah, it's a fantastic question and one that I think is increasingly important every day. Uh, and I think as you start to increase your scope and as you start to apply more advanced technology such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, of course woven with video, um, I, think, I think that question becomes even more important. There's a lot of misunderstanding out there about what these technologies do and don't do, how they can be used. So the, the first step, as you said, is to, to make sure that our customers trust the results of the products because this is important to them. They, in many cases, are vetting, you know, vetting the, their, the integrity of their organization, they're vetting their security and safety on, on the products. So it's extremely important for these, these technologies to actually behave in a very predictable manner. And, and I think as, you know, there's a saying that Arthur C. Clarke had actually mentioned, uh, he wrote 2001 A Space Odyssey, and he said any technology, uh, or I'm sorry, any technology that is sufficiently advanced is indistinguishable from magic. And so we don't want magical, magical technologies. We want technologies that are understandable, that people know what they're going to do, they're predictable, and they're reliable. Then the second part of your question, which is, okay, now what about societal trust? Um, that's one step removed from the product. That's increasingly important because, you know, society expects uh, the engagement in technologies. They expect the people that are keeping us all safe and secure and making things work to use the best. Um, we all expect that. But they don't want it to be misused. Uh, and so what we're finding is that dispelling some of the myths and misconceptions about the technology is part of the answer. But our customers, as they are adopting these, are increasingly looking at us as partners to engage with them, with communities, with society, um, with regulators, with legislative members to help understand, decompose the technology, help them represent it, so that so that trust is implicitly enabled in the technology and their use of it.